Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. Last episode, I was sharing with you the reflections of my heart on what is the purpose of our lives. That is the universal purpose that all human beings share. And the answer was... To love and be loved. Our purpose is simply to love and be loved. Now, that's a, the, the purpose of our lives at a general level. Okay, but we also have our specific purpose. Our specific purpose is the unique way in which you and I as individuals live out this general purpose. See, because when we think about, okay, love and be loved, there isn't just one way to express our loves. There isn't just one way in which we can receive that love into our lives. There are, in fact, infinite possibilities, especially... If you realize and recognize that this mandate, I will call it a mandate from my heart and soul. To love and be loved is not um, just meant to apply to a restricted aspect of my life. It's meant to apply to every aspect of my life, to every aspect of my being. You see, you begin to see, it's like, okay, all right. So this mandate to love and be loved applies to how I relate to myself. It applies to how I relate to all the people in my life. Hey, it even applies to how I relate to those people on the planet that I've maybe never come across, that I've never personally met or spoken to, but we share this one planet. We're all interconnected. We are all uh, interdependent. So even the people who are living in the African deserts or the South American, um, you know, Brazilian rainforest or in Australia or, I mean, these are places I've never even visited in my life, but it doesn't matter. All the people in the world, you see, we impact each other's lives. We do. I won't get into, you know, giving you all the examples of how we do that, but the fact is that we do. We are all interconnected. We are all interdependent. And guess what? We as people don't exist in a vacuum. We exist within an environment, within ecosystems. So, This mandate to love and be loved also applies to how I relate to the planet as a whole and everything that is within the planet. And and in fact, the universe, if you really think about it, you see, because everything that's in the universe is interconnected, interdependent. So when we begin to think about, okay, how do I live out this life purpose of love and be loved? I mean, there are infinite possibilities of how you can express this in your individual life. There are infinite possibilities, but there are some constraints on those uh, limitless possibilities. And those constraints are based on your particular context. So it's like 
where are you actually living? Are you living in the Brazilian rainforests or in the deserts of Africa? Or are you, like me, living in Los Angeles, California, like a, a, a city with like literally millions of, of people, like in this kind of uh, modern, high-tech, urban environment? So where I live, will have a huge impact on how I live in terms of how I express my values of love and be loved, right? Uh, Who is in my family? What family do I belong to? What culture do I belong to? You know, all of these things will have an impact on how I live out to love and be loved. What are, uh, what is my personality? Hey, We have different personality types. You know, uh, what are my individual strengths and unique talents and values and my uh, specific uh, desires of the kind of life that I want and so on and so forth. All of these things will have an impact on how I live out this mandate of my heart to love and be loved. And that's where the tricky part comes in. You see, it's like figuring out your specific purpose. This is where people can get stuck. So that's, I told you today, we will talk about and address some of the challenges that can come in our way of living out our purpose of love and be loved and this is one of those challenges it's like our specific purpose is a manifestation of our general purpose our universal purpose and so it's not like those two things are unconnected not at all and if you have yet to figure out your specific purpose you can kind of find yourself feeling lost even at the level of living out your general purpose. Even now, when you know, when I've shared with you, like if you didn't know before or you didn't have a sense of clarity before about what your universal general purpose was, even now that you have a sense of what it could be, But insofar as you're still not clear on your specific purpose, you may still find yourself feeling lost about how to live out this mandate of love and be loved. There are actually multiple levels at which we can address this challenge. And the first level at which I want to address this challenge is actually an invitation to you to shift your perspective from looking at this challenge as a challenge. See, the thing is that in every challenge, in every problem that we perceive, there is an opportunity, an opportunity to learn and grow. Learning and growing are awesome things, are they not? Hey, if you're not growing, we're dying. If you're not growing, we're dying. So whenever we have an opportunity to grow, that is an exciting thing because it means it allows us to live more, right? Engage in life more fully. So you can either choose to focus on the problem and feel overwhelmed by it or feel stressed out by it, feel bad about it because, hey, who likes a problem? At least as long as you are focused on the problem and thinking about the problem as a problem. No one wants that. But if you instead of focusing on the problem shift your perspective so that you're now focused on the opportunity that it contains for learning and growth you can get excited woohoo 
You can get excited about the problem. And here's the thing. There is a great opportunity in this particular problem. Like, hey, I don't know my specific life meaning and purpose. Even in the context of just like living out this broad, uh, general level purpose, universal purpose, there are potentially infinite number of ways in which I could, you know, express my love and receive love in my life. You can either be overwhelmed by the thought of infinite possibilities or get excited about them. You see, and here's why you can get really excited about it because with infinite possibilities before you, it means you have infinite options, okay? So the, the you can sort of like almost, you have nothing to worry about in terms of the chances of you doing anything with a good intention, with the intention of living out your purpose of love and be loved, the possibility of you doing something wrong. Oh my God, compared to like, wow. I mean, those, the number of possibilities, like assuming you're acting with good intention, the possibility of you doing something really wrong, I mean, it's like really, really small if you think about it because Just the possibilities, all the different ways you can get it right are limitless, are infinite. Right? And the reason why the possibility of you doing anything wrong, assuming you're acting with good intention to love and be loved, why that possibility is so small is because, hey, you know what? Our capacity to love and be loved it's like a natural instinct. We all like have a natural capability, a natural capacity to understand loving, caring behavior and to engage in loving, caring behavior. We just have to be thoughtful. The only times really, most of the time, most of the people who do something that is not loving and caring is when they're being thoughtless. Because how many people think to themselves and are okay with this kind of image of themselves where they're like, you know what, I'm going to do something that's just horrible, that I know is hurtful, that is harmful. I'm just going to do it and I'm okay with doing it. And I'm okay with being the kind of person who acts in these kind of thoughtless, careless, not only thoughtless, because we're not talking about thoughtless right now. We're talking about people who deliberately do things that they know are hurtful, that are harmful. How many people do you know? Are you like that? Are you somebody who's okay with being somebody who deliberately, knowingly does things that harm other people? I don't think so. I mean, the vast majority of people are not this way. The vast majority of people are good. They have good intentions. And they want to be good. Like, and they want to know, they want to think of themselves as good people. Doing good things. So most of the time when we end up doing things that are hurtful to others, or it, it's more issue with, hey, I'm, I'm thoughtless. I was thoughtless. I acted in a thoughtless way or I didn't know any better. You know, it, it's like, um, Marshall Rosenberg talks about, he says, um, it's like, you know, he actually thinks that this whole concept of mistakes is, should be just done away with. He says, we don't make mistakes. We just act in ways that we, we just find ourselves acting in ways that we wouldn't act in if we knew then what we know now, right? It's like 
the reason you think you make a you, you you made a mistake is because now you've learned something that you didn't know then. And now that you've learned that new information, you've gained some new awareness, you realize, oh, what I did before was a quote-unquote mistake. But at the time that you were actually making that quote-unquote mistake, you didn't think you were making a mistake. Like, who thinks, okay, this is a big mistake, but I'm still going to make it. But this is something wrong and I'm still going to do it. Like how many of us like deliberately do that to ourselves? And like sometimes, yes, we all do things like that. But the vast majority of time, that is not our intention. That is not our purpose. And that is not how we want to be. That is not how we want to live. So if you just are uh, committed, like you have this intention that I'm going to act in ways where I'm going to be loving and caring and be open to receiving love and care, you're naturally going to act in ways that are in fact loving and caring. And the likelihood of you doing otherwise when you hold that intention is very, very small. Like especially if you hold that intention in a way that like you're really committed to that as an intention, to living that intention out. And you're working with consciousness and purpose to achieve that goal of love and be loved. Okay? So get excited, guys. Get excited. It doesn't matter what your life circumstance and situation is right now. There are infinite possibilities for how you can love and be loved in your life right now and there are infinite possibilities for how you can enhance how you're loving and being loved in your life no matter what your circumstances are so focus on this opportunity and the great news that there's so little that you can do that's wrong once you start to live with this intention Wow, it's it's amazing. So very little room for error error, uh, and just limitless possibilities. And hey, you know what? Um, Actually, you know what? Yeah, okay. I was going to start um, (laughs) making another point, but I'm not going to make it right now. I see the time. So I'm going to wrap up here for today. And I'm going to address the same problem, but the second component to it next episode. In the meanwhile, I would love it if you would go on iTunes and leave the show, the Survivor to Thriver show, a five-star rating so that other people can also find it more easily. And hey, talking about helping other people find it more easily, besides leaving the rating... Uh, You can help other people find it more easily by recommending it to your friends and family. Just uh, post the link to this podcast on your Facebook or Twitter or, you know, um, whatever preferred method of communication you have. Let your friends and family know and encourage them to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and uh, listen to it as well. All right. So... With that great um, idea in terms of you showing me your love and I'm excited to continue to show you my love by connecting with you next time, I'm going to say goodbye for now, uh, but wishing you lots of peace and joy.